Let's go. Human Rights Watch has shown us exclusive footage of lynchings, burnings, and the mass exodus of the country's Muslims. The Muslim population of the Central African Republic is facing an unprecedented wave of violence. Human Rights Watch released a devastating report citing personal accounts of those who suffered when the Islamic State militants ambushed and massacred the group in August. There are hundreds of thousands of Yazidis who have fled their homes in northwest Iraq because of ISIS, which has been slaughtering and displacing this religious minority. Crises don't just happen. They don't come out of the blue. There's a context, there's a background, there's a history. And they emerge from years and years of abuse and repression. It's nearly impossible to understand what's happening in Iraq without being in Iraq. You cannot understand that story unless you're there. People in Iraq are absolutely living in a constant state of fear. They're afraid of everybody. You really need to talk to people face to face and establish that trust relationship in order to get information. وكان كان الامام في هو في المنبر لا نعم نعم احنا نشوف الاطلاقات وهم ضاربين عليه نعم قالها من منها ضاربه فكان الاطلاقات ضاربه وقع سقط هنا هذا الدماء مالته We have to be on the front line talking to eyewitnesses talking to victims in some cases talking to perpetrators we need to be examining all the evidence that we possibly can from the ground in order to build the case about the atrocities that are taking place. Amelie is just behind these electric. How many kilometers? In Iraq, you have a highly abusive Shia majority government, which is carrying out abuses against the Sunni minority population, killing, torturing, arbitrary detentions. <laughs> يعني انت تعرضتي لاغتصاب وضرب ونتلات وهذا ويجيبون عرضك يريدون يفعلون به طبعا تقول ايه تقول انا فجرت انا قتلت انا كل شيء سويت شو تريدون اوقع ابصى علاء عباس محسن 19 <تصفيق> Ongoing abuses that we're investigating are attacks on different towns in the areas around Baghdad. Militias alongside military and police would come into towns and start firing on residents, set their homes on fire, make sure that they couldn't come back, essentially cleansing the areas of Sunni residents. We have repeatedly asked the U.S. government to stop sending military aid to the Iraqi government because of the abuses that we were documenting and repeatedly warned that the abuses were causing the radicalization of the Sunni population. ISIS took over Mosul on June 10th, what seemed like this overnight, really sensationalist way. ISIS abuses are, are horrible. So what is it that has allowed them to, to gain this foothold? The reason is not because Sunnis have a natural affiliation towards their ideology. The reason is because they have been targeted, persecuted, killed, and politically disenfranchised. And essentially, they had nowhere else to turn. We were able to lay out that there needs to be a political solution, and part of that solution is to end the abuses against the Sunni population. And that as long as those abuses continued, they would simply fuel the civil conflict and the abuses of ISIS. Our job at Human Rights Watch is to find out what the real story is. So many abuses that are still taking place are just completely flying under the radar, and it's our job to shed light on that. This is actually 
a main road in the Central African Republic, believe it or not. Almost as soon as we got to the Central African Republic, we saw village after village completely abandoned, burned to the ground. And many times when our car would drive down the road, people would flee from us in absolute terror because they thought we were the fighters coming to kill them. The Central African Republic, was it not for the name, no one would be able to put it on the map. And as a result, when people started getting slaughtered there, nobody was really paying attention. It all started with a coup, with some Muslim rebels coming from the northern part of the country taking over power. And they did this in the most abusive ways. They burned entire villages, they looted, they killed. A few months after the Seleka began its reign of terror, the population started to form their own militia to fight against the Seleka. <laughs> That militia was called the Antibalaka. Young men, often kids, with very crude weapons, committing atrocious crimes. This was a massive crisis. The violations that were taking place in the country were of enormous proportion and yet no one was really paying attention to it. There were very few journalists uh, reporting from the ground. There were even fewer going to the places we were going to. We spent months and months driving thousands of kilometers across the Central African Republic, collecting hundreds upon hundreds of testimonies. The person who died this morning is <laughs> Confronting the killers themselves. We became an absolutely uh, essential source for the media. We were doing the reporting, we were providing the video footage, we were providing the pictures, we were providing the narrative. We saw some of the most horrific things I've seen in my entire career as a human rights activist. An entire people just abandoned to their fate. Once we realized just how far this violence could continue to grow, we very quickly mobilized to bring one of our chief advocates, Philippe Bolopillon, to Bangui to do research with us, and then to bring what he had seen himself back to New York and European capitals to confront the diplomats with the need to intervene very quickly to stop the killings. When we first started advocating for a UN peacekeeping mission, most of the policymakers we met with thought we were insane. They hadn't even thought about the idea of deploying UN peacekeepers to this God-forsaken country. A few UN peacekeepers in Bosangoa, suddenly you could have 40,000 people go back to their houses, go back to their fields. We were on a real campaign, using the press, meeting with uh, policymakers, trying to shame those that were uh, standing on the way. A UN peacekeeping mission on the ground. The peacekeeping mission will ultimately have about 12,000 soldiers, which is a massive commitment to this very ignored country. And their work is to try to put this country back on its feet so people can rebuild their lives. Yeah.